Thank you so much. I want to start out by saying a huge thank you to the women of the building trades for their great escort. I really appreciate it. And then my, yes, very proud to be with you. And to my Illinois locals who are part of my escort too, thank you. Um, but good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you to President Sean McGarvey, to Secretary Treasurer Brandon Bishop, and the Governing Board of Presidents, and my friend Chief of Staff Mike Monroe, for having me here today. As a proud trade unionist and a new member of Congress, I am thrilled to be with you here today. An honor to be a part, a partner to the hardworking men and women of the building trades as we work to make sure we are creating good paying union jobs and pathways to the middle class. I learned the value of a union contract at a very young age. My grandpa, Leonard Budzinski, was a member of the Painters Local Union 157 in Peoria, Illinois, where he worked for the Peoria Public School District. He was a son, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. He was the son of Polish immigrants. He had only a seventh grade education, but because of the training programs and because of his union contract, he was able to support his family, own a home, own a car, and retire at 60 with a pension. And throughout his career, he took great pride in the work that he did. His story illustrates just how important it is for workers to have the rights to collectively bargain, the value of the union apprenticeships, and how union jobs built this middle class in our country. His story is a part of what guided me to join the labor movement and dedicate my entire career to fighting for working people. It led me to my first jobs at the Laborers International Union of North America, And I'd like to take just a, a personal point of privilege to say um, a thank you to Terry O'Sullivan and his incredible leadership fighting for the men and women of Layuna for over 25 years. I would not be here without you. You are an incredible mentor, and the labor movement is stronger to having had your leadership, and thank you so much. So I just want to say thank you, Terry. <laughs> After leaving Layuna, I joined the International Association of Firefighters, and then for seven years, I worked for the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, and I am still a proud union dues-paying member of the UFCW. <clears throat> with each step, I stood with workers to fight for fair wages, better benefits, and safe working conditions for folks with some of the most dangerous jobs in our country. With each step, I stood with workers again to make sure that we were fighting back against so-called right-to-work laws, which we all know just weaken worker power. Working with the labor movement also led me to public service, as President McGarvey mentioned. I joined Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker as his senior advisor and was tasked with leading the negotiations to pass a $15 minimum wage in our state of Illinois, and we got that done. Thank you. And we also restored pro um, project labor agreements as well in the state of Illinois and was proud to be a part of that. And when I joined the Biden-Harris administration as the chief of staff at the Office of Management and Budget, I am most proud of helping to establish the Made in America office, which we, means that we are prioritizing American workers and American manufacturing again in this country. But what I didn't know is that this path would lead me to Congress. But now that I'm here, I can tell you, you will have no stronger partner in Congress than me and my office. It's the greatest honor and responsibility of my life to serve the working men and women of Central and Southern Illinois in the House of Representatives, and I am laser focused on tackling the issues that keep working families up at night and supporting the opportunities that lie ahead when we put working people first. 
That's why my first bill I introduced is the LEAP Act, a bipartisan bill I was able to do with a Republican colleague to support pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs that help folks like my, like my grandpa get good paying jobs in growing industries. And by supporting tax credits for small businesses, my bill will both address the need for more qualified workers and cut educational costs for job seekers. A win-win for both employers and employees. Let me share with you one of the stories of a constituent of mine that the LEAP Act will support. During my first month in office, I met a young African-American woman named Andrea Kelly from Decatur, Illinois. She started out her career, like a lot of us, earning a minimum wage job at a restaurant, um, at, a res at a fast food restaurant. And just like me, she was introduced to the building trades by her grandpa, who was an IBW member, a construction wireman at Fuya Glass in Illinois. She told me how fascinated she was when she was 10 years old, and he brought her with him to work. And, he could, and she could see how he was wiring lights at the plant. And so then later, when she saw the IBW was at her high school career fair, she knew she wanted to become a member of the IBW and become an electrician. She completed her pre-apprenticeship work through Illinois Works and just entered an internship with IBW, becoming a member of IBW Local 146. Over the next five years of Andrea's apprenticeship program, she's going to earn over a quarter of a million dollars in wages, have full health care benefits, and start paying into three different pensions. Andrea will finish her apprenticeship with a six-figure salary job in hand and no college debt. And that, as we all know, is the power of the union apprenticeship program. And, you, and no one knows this better than all of you, the working men and women of the building trades. And it's why I'm so proud to work every day in Congress to support programs like this. But I'm not stopping there. Since being sworn into office, I've been working hard to support the working families that I'm honored to represent. I've joined the Labor Caucus and the Building Trades Caucus. I also led a letter with Congressman Chris DeLuzio and each of the 36 freshmen. We sent a letter to President Biden saying any future trade agreements must have strong worker protections in them. <laughs> and I've launched the Climate Jobs Task Force because I think it's incredibly important as we make a transition to a clean energy economy that that economy is built with union labor. And now we have a lot of work to do to continue to fight for and protect America's middle class. It will take collaboration and working together to get things done, and sometimes with my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. I think that's very important. I'm looking forward to continuing to partner with all of you on behalf of the nation's working men and women, and I want to say thank you again so much for the opportunity to be with you here today. It's been such an honor to get to address the conference, so thank you. Thank you.